Thank you, Tate. Our New Testament reading um, is Luke 13, verses 1 through 9, and that can be found on page 1619 in, in the few Bibles that you have. What a significant year, 1619. But page 1619, again, Luke 13, 1 through 9. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, do you think these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Are those 18 who died when the tower in Cilium fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I haven't found anything. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Okay, our sermon today, and as you can see, I'm not Pastor Cheryl. <laughs> um, but our sermon today is, and it will be, it will be brief, it's called, Who Are We? And uh, there's many references in the Bible as to who we are. And one of those begins in Genesis 1, Genesis 1, chapter, um, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Another one is from Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Okay, I, I, I selected both of those as a preface to um, what I'm going to share with you briefly today. Who we are, who are we rather, and who have we become? And one of the reasons that I selected this topic was almost about a year ago today, or it might have been a little longer than that, um, I was posed a question. And that question was, and I've been posed it many times in my life, I just chose, I guess, not to really find out the answers or, or, or convey the answers. But um, about a year ago, I was talking with a friend of mine who happens to be a member of the AMA Church, um, African Methodist uh, Episcopal Church. And we got to talking. We were talking about family history and what goes on with family history and why family history is important. And we decided to talk about our denominations. Or rather, she shared with me you know, how she'd been AMA all her life, and I shared with her how I had been Presbyterian all my life. And so she said to me, or, or rather asked the question, why are you Presbyterian, Davida? <laughs> I was a little taken aback. I knew I could ask that question before, but I just chose to ignore it. And I said, well, you know, I can't, 
I can answer that, but I can't answer that. And I shared with her that I've been Presbyterian literally all my life. I was born in the Presbyterian church, and it looks like I probably can die in the Presbyterian church as well. And um, so I shared that with her, and I began to say, you know, I can't just give this, continue to give this flat answer using that explanation that, you know, because of a family history or because of a family of missionaries or um, others in the family who served the Presbyterian Church and friends of the family who served, and many of you who served, I owed a different explanation. So I went back, and as a result of that, um, there were some things I knew historically, um, coming from a history poli sci background at one point earlier in my life, and so, I said, you know, I'm going to find out a few more things and let people know about a few more things, although most of you probably do know some of what I may share here today, um, about our being, coming into being in the 1700s and about how the church um, was in Philadelphia in those early years and how, um, you know, they were originally in 1706 too. Um, actually, denominations coming to form what was at that time PCUSA. And what later became, in 1983, the, uh, the merger, of course, of the Southern Church and, and the Northern Church with us. But there are some things, um, of course, John Calvin, we all know about that piece um, and about how you know the Reformation took place and how Calvin was a, a lawyer and was not ordained himself, but um, did lead a movement that provided much for our church and, and, the, and um, the idolatry of our church. And, um, so Presbyterian, part of Presbyterian, part of the word, the word Presbyter comes from the Greek word elder. And um, so all of us who are servants of God, many of you sitting in here are elders or deacons, or you were serving him just by being here today. So those are some of the things um, that our church is involved in. Of course, you know, we're heavily involved in mission. And from the United Presbyterian's mission standpoint, some of the things we serve here in our community are the Presbyterian Counseling Center, Halifax Urban Ministries. Um, we hope at one time to hopefully be a part of faith. Many of you have heard of faith. I think we had somebody come here and talk about fighting against injustice through harmony. So that's what faith is, and those are some of the things that our church has been doing towards mission. So there is a global mission, and of course there's our church mission within the Presbyterian Church. Um, Many of you probably already know that in 1930, with this being Women's History Month, in 1930, the, the first um, female elder was ordained in the Presbyterian Church at that time. And just because there was that ordination didn't mean that you know women were basically placed out there early on to speak at that time, but that was the first time. In 1956 was the first time that a, a woman was pretty much ordained in the pastorate. And, and that lady, if I'm not mistaken, she, I believe she's still around today at the time Reverend Margaret. Um, and I think that those are some of the things that shape us and why we are who we are. But why are we who we are here at, at United? We came together as a result of a merger um, many years ago. And that merger, um, Reverend Anderson is here, and he was a part of Highlands Presbyterian, as were many of you at that time when we merged to form United in, um, I believe, 2005, 2006, if I'm not mistaken. But at that time, um, many of us had to search our souls about the merger. But I think through God, it ended up being one of the best things that happened to us, You know, not only socially, community-wise, but historically. Um, some of the names that I'm going to share with you, many of you may have heard some of these names in the past, but if you have not, um, you know, there are some people that you may want to further delve into their lives. Reverend Sheldon Jackson, in 1877, formed mission schools in Alaska. He was also known as one of the first people to bring reindeer to the state of Alaska at that time. And um, his, his college was Sheldon Jackson College, which was a school for Indians and Eskimos. And um, you know there were some pluses and minuses to that. Um, it's also a school where my parents later happened to work in the 1960s um, up until, you know, I guess they retired from there. But um, that's one of the prominent names. Um, Thelma Dare, many of you probably know, she was one of the first, um, I think, African-American, and females to moderate um, the General Assembly. 
uh, back in the, around 1976. So we've had a rich history with those things. But as far as our community here, our community here in Daytona Beach with United, there are so many things that we hope to continue to do and we want you to be a part of. Many of you probably remember in the past some of the things that we've done as far as the, the rummage sales, the Easter egg hunts that we've done. And, and um, just because we don't physically have the youth here, it, it still doesn't mean that we can't continue to, to grow and continue to do those things to enhance our church and to continue to keep our church alive. So those are some of the things that, that we look at as well. The One Great Hour of Shared Mission is another one that um, many of you probably have seen those envelopes out there. Um, that's one that's been around for quite some time and the One Great Hour of Sharing has allowed so many people to be educated in the Presbyterian Church, whether it be you know, at the collegiate level or other levels and, and getting people to the youth triennium and um, General Assembly on many instances. So those are a lot of the things not only here that we're doing, but nationally. So we hope to continue to grow those things as part of God's mission here and what our church is about. And so those are some of the things that are what Presbyterians do and continue to do. And I keep stressing mission and community because those are two, two of the main factors that, you know, whether it be missions here, globally, or wherever else it may be, um, we have, we've had many people who've come here and spoken to us about that through Minute for Mission and other things through the years. And so I think in my research again, now I may be able to kind of answer that question a little bit better. They may not want to hear it. They may not ever <laughs> ask me again. <laughs> but, um, you know, that was just something that's always been pressing on my mind that I need to not just say that I'm Presbyterian, but I need to be able <laughs> to address some things and to answer some things. And I know many of you are already versed in that, and so that's the reason today um, that I'm sharing this information. Um, one of the main thrusts of our church, of course, is the, our interpretation of the Bible. And relying on that in many ways, as you can see, not only through the adult Sunday school, but through what we do in here. So I think it's so important with your help, many of you have helped us to grow and to promote the church and we continue to hope to do that. And through you, it just doesn't mean because we don't see little kids here that the church is going to die. No. We can live on and on and on, whether it be in your hearts, your minds. We've all still got minds. Okay? We've all still got hearts. It doesn't matter how old you are, you know. And um, so those are all things that we need to continue to, to look at. And I know that we, you all have ideas. Many of you have, have expressed them. So those are just some things I wanted to briefly share with you today about the church. And the next time someone does ask me why I'm in the church, maybe I'll be able to come up with a more concrete answer. Or either go around the world maybe days. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, that's one of the reasons I wanted to share that today. And I appreciate you all being here and you're being attentive. If you would join me in the affirmation of faith is printed in our book.